again, it's sure it's good to see all of you this morning. Do you have any first time business with us? Do you have any first time business? You see, okay, it's in my ball here. We have one right down here, sir. We got it. Amen. It's good to have you with us. Sharing the love that you provided for us. Yes. Lord, we pray for all those who are in leadership over us, our president, our vice president, our national, state, and local governments. Lord, bless them today. Grant them wisdom, guide them, and help them make the right decisions for this nation, for all of us. Lord, we pray for all of our local schools. Bless our children. Protect them as they're getting ready to go back to school. They've had a vacation, but Lord, now it's time to go back to school. Watch over them. Keep them safe. Be with the teachers, faculty, and staff. Help them to find the best ways to protect our children out of the school. Lord, we pray for our military, our law enforcement, our firefighters, EMTs, Lord, all those that stand in harm's way for us. Protect them today. Guide them. Help them to know where they need to be to help others. May Lord bless them for risking their lives every day for us. Lord, we pray for all of our local churches, all those that serve the Lord Jesus Christ. Bless the services to be with the pastors, Sunday school teachers, Lord, all those that are serving you. Guide us. Help us to know exactly what you want us to say, what you want us to teach them. The pastors, Lord, give them the strength to teach your word boldly. Lord, we pray especially for Bethesda Baptist Church this morning. We need your guidance, your strength. Please continue to help this church to grow. Please continue to help us financially. Lord, use this church to reach this community. Lord, we ask that you be with our pastor this morning. Give him your strength, your courage. Help him to know exactly what you want him to say to them. And touch our hearts with your word. Lord, again, we ask that you bless this day, bless this service. Take control. May your will be done in this place today. All these things we ask in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Amen. Let's all turn our hymns to hymn number 45. Hymn number 45, we're reading all four verses. This is our offertory and let's all stand.
sick, Father, people, Brother Ernie Glover, his family, Father, yes. during this time, just give them the, the, the peace and understanding that only you can give, Father. Father, we just love you for that. Father, most of all, just as our pastor reminded us last week, Father, let us not forget, Father, that every day is a day to celebrate your risen Savior. Yes. Father, we just thank you for that, Father. We thank you for dying on the cross for us, Jesus. We thank you for God for raising him again on the third day. Thank you again. Most of all, for one day, coming back to get your church, Father. Yeah. Thank you. Until that time, Father, as you continue to use us, Father, to spread your love, Father, use these tithes and offerings to accomplish that, Father. Father, we just love you and we thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.
uh, in their loss. Uh, pray for Traveler's Mercy. He's going down to be with the family uh, tomorrow morning. Uh, but, uh, it seems that Mr. Charles' wife is down there by herself. Uh, the family hasn't had a chance to come in yet, so he's going to go down there and be with them and help with the arrangements and one thing. Though. So let's lift him up and ask for God's intervention. And also, while we're praying, uh, let's not forget Miss Sherry uh, Holloman. Uh, she has come down with the shingles. Oh. Uh, yes, and uh, having to go back to work, you know what I'm saying, it's not a good day, but uh, anyway, she's at home today, resting, hopefully trying to recover. Uh, if you know anything about the shingles, that's not a short thing, that's something that can be very long and drawn out, so uh, just uh, lift her up and ask for her, uh, for God's intervention, and also, uh, Brother Paul Autry uh, is, uh, we went married, I went to see him last night, he is in a tremendous amount of pain. Uh, his legs are just weeping, fluid, that uh, uh, just, he says it burns like acid, so I, I don't know. Uh, but he was in a tremendous, I mean, he was crying out last night uh, and asking for us to pray for him. So I said we would uh, lift him up in the Lord, and I asked you as a church family uh, to lift him up as well. Before I dismiss the kids, I, I did want to show you all one thing. Uh, I, of course, y'all know Rocco, today's Rocco's first day, Rose Nicole. <laughs> she is with us for the very, very first time today. We're so glad to see her. But, but Rocco owns a dog, and that dog's name is Sparky. Okay? It seems that Sparky was injured in a tragic getting out of the truck accident. Uh, and anyway, had him wind up at the emergency vet with mom and grandma. <laughs> They, pres they prescribed this dog opiates, and now, thanks to Grandma watching him, he <laughs> they, 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 I, has now turned, he's one of those opioid-induced dogs. <laughs> I mean, he went from happy and normal, went from happy and normal, to this in just three days, Stanley and Greg. <laughs> so y'all be much in prayer for them as uh, <laughs> Sparky is. A, it, I, I'm telling you what, it, if it would have been, it couldn't have been no more if it had been Rock or her. Sparky kept me. I said, it's a dog. You know what I'm saying? He'll jump off of the uh, uh, off of the sofa and it'll hurt him. I said, you know what? He can do that about once. And then he'll decide, guess what? Not too smart to jump off the sofa. No, Grandma would not have that. Slid the coffee table up there to add her coffee in it uh, on the table, and guess what? It was sampling coffee, so the dog is addicted to it. Uh, so, anyway, pray for me, that's why I'm crazy. All right? So, Brother Leroy, yes, sir. No, we're not going to do it today. And here's what I'd like to do we, we've still got two more weeks that I would like to continue to do the Easter uh, offering. But I'm not going to do it today because I know y'all weren't prepared for it. But what I'm going to ask is next Sunday morning to be prepared to give. What, where are we at, Ms. Carol? Do you know in the... In the $1,588. $1,588? $1588. $1588. dollars So we need about, what, $400, $500 more, dollars, $420, something like that. We can do that, and we can do that next week if you come prepared to give. So we will take any amount, a dollar, five dollars, five thousand dollars, whatever the Lord lays on your heart, but come prepared next week, uh, and we're going to take up again uh, for our Easter offering, okay? We haven't met our goal yet. We're off by about 420 bucks, okay? God's got that in your pocket sitting right out there, all right? So we'll be prepared for that, all right? Okay, so Brother Leroy, can we go ahead and dismiss your class now, Miss Barbara? You don't have you got a class this morning? Any of our toddlers need Miss Barbara's class? Oh, that's seventy dollars from the children's shirt. Woo! How about a hand for the children's shirt? Amen.
So, the rest of you are stuck with me. If you take your Bibles and open them with me, please, to the book of Acts. The book of Acts is the Acts of the Apostles. Uh, that's found right after the book of John. Okay, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, then the book of Acts. I'm going to start a new series uh, today. Uh, and I, it's, it's five or six sermons. I haven't really decided just yet. But it is, the series is Life After Easter. Now, how many of y'all hunted Easter eggs this Easter? Nobody hunted Easter eggs? Uh, thank you. All right. Okay, let me do this. This might be better. How many of y'all ate chocolate Easter bunnies? Lots more hands went up that time around. Okay? Or Easter eggs or chocolate of some sort. Ladies, every one of y'all's hands ought to go up. Because you know y'all ate some chocolate, right? Well, the problem is, is that after the Easter bunny is gone, we somehow or another think that Easter is over. And so what I want you to understand is, is that Easter isn't just this singular event in the Bible, and then after that, everybody just went home and hunted Easter eggs. But what I'm trying to tell you is, there is life after Easter. Matter of fact, actually, after Easter is the greatest part of your life, because now you have a reason to live. So I want to do a short series on some events that occurred after Easter, after the resurrection. In order to do that, we need to go into the book of Acts, okay? Acts chapter 11. Get over here right quick, would you? thought I had it marked. I guess I do. Just got to get to it. All right, what you need to understand, there's some things you need to understand that's going on here, okay? In the Old Testament, Israel had practiced a, what is called a doctrine of separation. Doctrine of separation. In other words, they were forbidden to intermarry with other cultures, other races. When they came into the land, matter of fact, God told uh, Joshua, said, look, Everything that you come across, you know, right, don't be a part of it. Because if you start participating in that culture, you're going to bring sin into the house of Israel. So he said, look, I need you to be a separate people, a people that have been set up uh, and created in order to worship God. Okay? And so they practiced this, this doctrine of separation. Uh, uh, fact, actually, they thought that Gentiles were subhuman people. Uh, and it, what they forgot was is that God had created this group of people, the Jews, Israel, in order to be able to witness to the entire rest of the world about the light of who God was. But very much like today in the church in the West, Israel kind of got sidetracked. As they kind of went along, they came to a point where they were no longer inclusive trying to bring people into the faith, they were exclusive. In other words, they said, look, you can't come over here. Now, fact, actually, if a Gentile uh, were to come you know, into their midst, they would actually walk across the road. They, if a Gentile, they would have, an uh, Israelite, were to have contact with a Gentile during the course of the day, he could not or she could not go into the temple in order to worship. All right? That's how prejudiced they had become. They had come to a point where they said, guess what? There's a barrier between us and them. But then something happened. An earth-changing event occurred that we celebrated last week. Jesus comes on the scene and he says, guess what? Everybody can now be saved. Amen? Amen. Now, this presents a problem. It presents a problem to the Jews because the Jews believe what? We're all that in the Big Mac and order French fries. Yeah. Not your head. Yeah. All right? Just like today, some Christian denominations think they're all that in the Big Mac and order French fries. And the problem is, is that guess what? If we're not real, real careful, we can come to a point where we build a wall around the church and the very people who need to get in can't. Because we're saying, you're not our type of person. Why? Well, you're not on the social ladder here. Or, hey, you had an addiction problem and we can't welcome you into our fellowship. And I'm here to tell you folks, that 
are these people are the exact people who need to be in church. Amen? They are the exact ones that Jesus rose from the dead for. Those people who are broken. Those people who need a new life and a new start. You see, the Israelites and the Jews had erected all of these walls around them. The social, the economic, the cultural, even the national. And with Jesus rising from the dead, just as the temple was rent, the, the, the uh, veil of the temple was rent, so were all these walls put down. Matter of fact, Paul goes on to say that, you know what, there's no difference between the, the Greek or the Jew. There is no difference between male or female. In other words, guess what? We all start in the same place. Amen? Amen. So, this event takes place to remove these barriers. Now, let me give you a little background about what's going on here in chapter 11. Okay? Alright? Cornelius, who is a Roman centurion has been praying to God. Now the Bible says in verse 1 that he was a devout man who feared God. Chapter 10, verse 1. All right? And so he was seeking God and in answer to his prayer after Easter, guess what God did? He sent an angel to him and the angel said, there's one who can tell you what you need to know. His name is Simon Peter and he is in Joppa. Okay? So you sent some folks to Joppa to get Peter to come back here so that he can tell you about the resurrection. Well, Peter's vision occurs right after this, where God lets down a sheet from heaven and there are all manner of beasts on it. Now, if you know anything about Jewish customs, there were certain things that they could not eat. That in the Old Testament, in the Old Testament economy, they were deemed unclean animals. And as such, they could not eat them. Okay? Feel sorry for all Jewish people that did not eat bacon. Can you imagine that? <laughs> My wife told me this morning while we were eating bacon, and the dogs were eating more than we were, that, guess what? There would be bacon in heaven. Anyway. Peter's vision occurs, and, he, and, and God tells him, go and kill and eat from this, this sheet of all these different animals. Well, Peter says, not so, Lord. I can't go out here and kill and eat. These animals are unclean. And the voice comes back to him and says, what God hath made clean, don't call common. All right? And the reason that all of this is occurring is because what I want you to understand is, after the resurrection, guess what happened? The door of salvation opened up to anyone who would come. Amen. All right? And that's what God is trying to teach Peter and all the rest of us. That you know what? Sometimes there are barriers that prevent us from doing what God would have us to do. Now, I want you to go with me to uh, chapter 11. I'll let y'all unpack it in that. All right. Go with me to chapter 11. Look at me at verse 1. Say amen when you get there. Amen. It says, And the apostles and the brethren that were in Judea heard that the Gentiles had received the word of God. Shock. And when Peter was come up to Jerusalem, they were of the circumcision, that, I'm sorry, they that were of the circumcision contended with him saying, Thou wentest into men uncircumcised, and did eat with them. But Peter rehearsed the matter from the beginning, and expounded it by order of them, saying, I was in the city of Joppa praying, and in a trance I saw a vision. A certain vessel descended, as it had been a great sheet, let down from heaven by four corners, and it came even to me. Upon the which I had, I had fastened mine eyes, I considered, and saw a four-footed beast of the earth, and wild beasts, and creeping things, and fowls of the air. And I heard a voice saying unto me, Arise, Peter, slay and eat. But I said, Not so, Lord, for nothing common or unclean hath at any time entered into my mouth. But the voice, of the, but the voice answered me again from heaven, What God hath cleansed, that call not thou common. And this was done three times. 
and all were drawn up again into heaven. And behold, immediately there were three men come unto the house where I was sent from Caesarea unto me. Okay? So, now what has happened is, uh, he has gone down to Cornelius' house, and he has ministered to them, and word gets back to the church in Jerusalem. Now what happens? Anybody catch verse 2? The religious crowd did what? Got all wrapped around the axle, didn't they? Why? What are you doing going in there and eating with these unclean people who are Gentiles? Barrier number one. Their prejudices. And what did Peter have to tell them? When God has cleansed, guess what? Don't call common. Now, do you think that Peter knew he was in for trouble when God told him to go down to the Gentiles' house and minister to them? Oh, yes, he knew. And you know how he knew? Because he took some witnesses with him. Anybody want to know why? Because those people who are the circumcision, what we would call the traditionalists, guess what? They were fixing to beat his eyes out when he walked back in there and said, I can't believe how dare you violate scribal law. And that's the reason I want you to understand that. Not doctrine. They did not violate scriptural doctrine, and there is a difference. Okay? He violated their custom and their tradition, and they were on him like a, a, a what's that, like a, a like a bug on a, or a bird on a June bug. They were all over him saying, how dare you go down there and talk to those people? Now, let me ask you a question before we get uh, really uh, 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 start worrying about uh, these people or concerned about these folks in search city. How many times have we done the same thing? Amen. Think about it for a minute now. Those aren't really the kind of people we want to witness to for a church. Why, you know, them people came in that, you know, and I'm telling you, they didn't have on their Armani suits. Do you know that their socks did not match their pants? <laughs> Why, I don't know if we can minister them, preacher, you know. Uh, they're in a bad way. See, what I want you to understand, the first barrier that I want you to see is, is there is a barrier to God's work. Listen to what I'm telling you now. There was a barrier to God's work. The traditionalists, the people who said, we've always done it this way, said, we can't do it that way. Now, let me ask you a question. Ever been in a church that was 120 years old and somebody said, but we've always done it that way? Yes. Now, you know what the definition of crazy is? Anybody know what it is? Doing the same thing over and over and over again and expecting different results. So, if it ain't worked for the last hundred years, guess what? It probably ain't going to work for the next hundred years. Say amen. Now, we're not talking about doctrine here. We are not talking about doctrine. We will never violate doctrine. I'm talking about customs and traditions. The Christmas tree has to be in that certain place. If it ain't, and it's got colored bulbs on it, sacrilege. <laughs> I'm never coming back. Ever been there? Say amen. Nod your head. Ever heard that statement? God works in mysterious ways. What does that mean? Anybody know? He works in ways that we what? Don't know. So when he comes in and does something different, in a different way, what happens? We all stand around and say, this can't be of the Lord. But yet we're the first ones to say, God works in mysterious ways until he what? Works in mysterious ways and then we get what? We got lip get all poked out. I ain't never coming back. Amen? That's what traditions can do for you. They can create a barrier to God's work. Because let me ask you this. Is there anyone that you know, is there anyone in this community, the good, the bad, and the ugly, that God don't want to save? 
Is there any, any one of them that Jesus didn't lay his life down and rise up again the third day for? Anyone. Then why do we have the right or think we have the right to stand in the way of the work of the Lord? Amen. Am I right or wrong? Right. All right. So the first barrier I want to look at is God uses different ways for worship, doesn't he? Say amen. amen. Now somebody said, I'll sit back there and say, but you ain't bringing no, no snakes in here, preacher. I'm not talking about that. Okay. But do you think that he uses different worship styles? He does, doesn't he? You know, we've changed up some things here. Man, you should have seen the first time that I didn't do the announcements. <laughs> Woo-wee. I had some people that wanted to crucify Brother David. <laughs> what is he doing up there opening in prayer? He's not a pastor here. Where's the pastor at? Don't we pay him to open in prayer? <laughs> Say amen. Nod your head. Right? Because some was different. You know, we took the announcements and moved them to the end of the service. You'd have thought we shot some people. What about that whole group of people who reads the bulletin to find mistakes? They had to wait to the end of the service to say something, didn't they? <coughs> Got all upset about it. So, we need to be careful. Are we open to God's leading in the way He does things in service and ministry and healing? Are we, are we open to that? Or do we just simply say, that's why we've always done it? Well, if it ain't working, guess what? Maybe that's not the way God's doing it now. Say amen. amen. Getting that real timid. All right? All right, so the first barrier is a barrier to God's work. Now, there are also barriers in this new life in Easter to obedience. Okay? Now, think about this for just a minute. Look at obedience from Peter's standpoint. Was Peter taking a chance on being obedient to God telling him to go down to Cornelius' house? Did he? He did why? Because the tradition of the Jew was what? Don't go to the Gentiles. These are filthy, evil people. Don't fool with them. Alright? So, had he succumbed to the opinion of others, would he have been obedient? See, there are many of you today, God's telling you to do something, and you're not obedient. You know why? Because you're scared of what people will say. Come on. Man, if I lift my hand up while they're praying or saying, oh my goodness, you know the people behind me, they'll tell me on the way out, you know, you had your hand up. Like it was some involuntary action. <laughs> why? I can't do that. People will think, preacher, they'll think, and we don't want to be. Isn't that interesting? You know, we talk about how we ought to be reverent when we're at worship. You know what I'm saying? But I'll tell you, you take these same group of folks, put them out there on a bleacher somewhere, watching a ball game or a soccer game or something, some pig filled up with air flying up and down. Get that, kill them, kill them, kill them! <laughs> Jump up and down, hoop and holler and all that kind of stuff. But when it comes to praising the Lord, guess what? Do you know the Bible says that God inhabits the praise of his people? Amen. You ever thought about that for a minute? So Peter, he could have he said, look, the opinions of others don't, don't, won't allow me to do that. And what about Cornelius for a minute? Have you thought about He was a Roman centurion talking to a Jewish conquered people fisherman. What do you think his people would have said had he listened to them? Would they have said, gee, how about go out and find somebody you've conquered and listen to what they tell you about eternal life? Would you, what, what would you think they thought? How about this? What about his pride and his prestige? You know, in the army and all, you know, you got rank, man. You got to pay attention to what you're doing. Can't just hang around with anybody. <laughs> Amen. How about a fellow by the name of Nam? Y'all remember him? <coughs> Syrian, captain of the host, went to Elijah, Elisha, <coughs> with a SH, had, had leprosy. Right? Great leader, had leprosy. 
went to Elisha. You know what Elisha said? Go down and dip yourself in the Jordan River seven times. Now, if you know anything about the history or the culture or the, the traditions of their area, guess what? The Jordan River is a very shallow, muddy river. Okay? You know what Nam told him? I'm going back to Syria with my leprosy because I'm not dipping in no muddy, dirty river. He says, I'll go back to Damascus where they got some real rivers that are clean. In other words, what he said was, I want to be healed, but I want to do it my way. And it had not been for his servant, he would have went home and died of leprosy. But because his servant said, you need to get over your pride and go down and do what the man of God told you to do. And guess what? He went down and was healed. See, today, we, we don't obey God sometimes because of the pride. The barrier of pride in our life. That keeps us from saying, Lord, you know what? I'm going to be obedient no matter what other people think. I'm going to be obedient no matter what the world says that looks like to them. I'm going to be obedient not because I'm wonderful or I'm good or I'm smart. I'm going to be obedient because you are faithful. I'm going to be obedient because that's what a child of the king does. But that's not the only barrier. These on the right quick hang out just a minute. There are barriers to salvation. Now I want you to notice the timing of the request. Okay? Peter's just coming down off the roof with a vision. Right? What's happening at the front door? Anybody know? The servants of Cornelius are knocking on the front door. Now think about that for a minute. You ever heard that old saying, timing is everything? Just about the time Peter's coming down, the men are knocking on the door. He wondered about the vision he had, whether it was from God. God said, go down. There are three men waiting on you right now to go to Cornelius' house. Guess what happened? Time he makes the last step. Do, 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 do. <laughs> Who's at the front door? And he was the servant saying, hey, how about come down to uh, uh, Caesarea and tell us about Jesus? Well, time it is everything. And when the barrier of salvation, the greatest myth is this. The devil tells you, you have time. Ever been a church service? Man, the Lord is working on your heart. You know you need to do something. And somewhere, out of, out of nowhere, someone whispers to you, not today. I've got time. Well, you know, the Bible says that, guess what? None of us are promised our next heartbeat. Right. So you can step right out of this door. Back up. You can stand up. And step into the presence of Almighty God. Amen? Amen? So you need to be sure of your salvation right here, right now. Now, young folks, if you don't believe this, and old folks, if you don't believe this, go with me out to the cemetery, and guess what you find? Just as many short graves as you do long ones. <coughs> so the time of salvation is now. Now, a lot of folks will say, you know what? I'll come when I'm ready. Y'all ever thought that before? I'm just not ready now. I talk to some young men, usually young men, some young women. I just want to sow my wild oats. I just want to go out there and do the things I want to do. I've got time. Why, I'll come next week after I've been to the big party. What's the problem with that? Well, next week's not going to guarantee, but here's the deal. You may come to the exact same service you may hear the exact same message, and guess what? The Spirit may not be speaking to your heart. How do I know that? Well, if you look on the board up there, John chapter 6 and verse 44, Jesus said, No man can come to me except the Father which hath sent me, what? So guess what? You may not feel the draw of God the next time you walk into a church. The next time you hear a sermon. So that means that guess what? You are not guaranteed tomorrow. You cannot wait till tomorrow. If God is dealing with your heart, you need to deal with it right now, today. Amen. Don't wait. Don't wait. Because the devil's going to lie to you. And he's going to tell you you've got time. 
and none of us are guaranteed that time. But that's not all. Listen to this. There are barriers to service today. Barriers to service. Some of us are not really even sure of our own salvation. So we don't serve. You know why? Because we don't know whether we're a child of the king. Now, why is it that we're not sure of our salvation? Well, here's the reason why. Because some folks, when they make a decision for Christ, they go in the front door and go right out the back door, and we never see them again. So the whole time, the devil is messing with them, saying, hey, you can't be saved. You live just like you always did. And the Bible cautions us that after we have a salvation experience, something in our life should change. You should be a new creation in Christ Jesus. You shouldn't be able to go to the same old places you used to go. You shouldn't be able to hang out with the same old people you used to hang out with. Why? Because the Holy Spirit inside of you makes it uncomfortable. So today, some of us don't serve because we're not even sure that we're saved. And then some of us fear failure. Now, I like this because people will tell me, when we're talking about Vacation Bible School, where's Brother John in the back back there, waiting for Vacation Bible School, hallelujah. People say, well, I'm afraid I, I won't do a good job. That is not fear of failure. That is fear of your own inadequacy. That's right. That's not coming. <laughs> it's you're saying, I can't do this. And I'm telling you, you can't do it either. That's right. But I'm telling you, through Christ Jesus, you can do all things. Ooh. Amen? Amen? Amen. Amen? So whatever he's calling you to do, if you're his child, you need to be about it. And you need to be busy. And you don't need to let the barrier of fear stop you from serving. Then there's that crowd of the stars that was them. She's got all their names written down. Next year. You just wait till next year, preacher. I'm going to get after it, man. I don't. You just wait. Next year. What's the problem with that? We just said you may not make it till next year, amen? <clears throat> then there's that group that says, you know what? God can't use me. Preacher, you just don't know where I've been. No, I don't know where you've been. And you don't have to confess anything to me because I'm nobody. But I'll tell you what, I know who, the one who knows all your yesterdays, all your todays, and all your tomorrows. Amen? And I know that when he tells you that he is faithful and just to forgive you your sins and to cleanse you from all unrighteousness, he said, I give you a fresh start. Amen? Amen? Get out of the pity party and get up to the plate. <laughs> we need people who want to serve. Amen. Don't use your past. Don't waller in self-pity. Move on. Because God expects us. Now think about this for a minute. What about the fellow that we're talking about here? Remember a guy by the name of Peter? Peter before Easter. Anybody remember him? What happened? Trial of Jesus. Jesus told him before he ever went in there, what? Three times, you're going to what? You remember the little girl he was talking to? He said, the Bible says he's or, and I'm not like using curse words, that he did not know this man. Now let me tell you something. If your past was a barrier to your service, <coughs> Peter would have been disqualified. Say amen. But God did what? Forgave him, restored him, and used him mightily. Amen? Don't let there be a barrier your service. So in conclusion, how many Easter's have passed since you understood the meaning of Easter? Five? Ten? Hundred? How many of you today live just like you did before last week? How many of you today celebrated Easter with the Easter money and as soon as the chocolate was gone, Easter was over? See, because most of us are living just like we lived before, during, and after Easter. When in reality, what I tell you, it was an earth 
shattering, changing event, which means that, guess what? Your life should have been turned upside down, and you were forever different. One week past Easter of 2018, are there barriers in the work of God? Do we worry about the traditions of men? Do you know so-and-so will say something if we do that? I've heard that more times than I care to think. What about this? How about barriers to your obedience? Maybe today you're saying, you know what? I'm not going to get saved today, preacher, but next week you watch that's kind of like when you tell, you, you ever heard somebody say the check's in the mail? When am I going to get paid? The check's in the mail. There's some of you today that need to get saved. Preacher, I will never hear. Been a member since 1904. I'll tell you what my mom and dad was never. I didn't ask you whether you were a member. I asked you whether or not you're a child of the king. Have your sins been forgiven and washed in the blood? If they haven't, no amount of church membership even in a great church like this one, can help you. Right. Today, there are some of you that have <laughs> barriers to your obedience, to your service. God has something here for you to do, That's right. and you're just not doing it. Whatever the reason, you fill in the blank. I, I don't have time to go through all of the excuses. The fire engine's red will work. But if you're a saved, born again, blood lost child of the king, you were saved to serve. There's a purpose in your life, and God wants to use you. Now, it's interesting because God gave us an Easter to show us that he can and will break down all these barriers. Remember the ladies that were going to the tomb? What were they saying as they walked along? Who's going to roll away the stone? Who's going to remove the barrier so that we can get to the body of Jesus and prepare him for, for burial? And when they got there, oops, guess what? The stone was rolled away. Amen? God removed the barrier. And he wants to remove the barriers in your life today. All you have to do is come. I don't know what's standing between you and your salvation. I don't know what's standing between you and your service. I don't know what's standing between you and your obedience. But whatever it is, won't you come and talk to him? Because he can remove it today. If you'll just become. Won't you take your hymnals and stand with us? Turn to page 317. Page 317. And as you stand, join me as we pray. Our Father, our God, as we now your presence, Lord, once again, we Worship you, we honor you, we praise you. Thank you for this week after Easter. Father, you just didn't give us Easter as a symbol. Father, you gave us Easter to change our lives forever. Father, we realize that as we walk with you, there'll be barriers. There'll be things, Lord, that will prevent us from doing what we should do. But Father, we also know that your Holy Spirit can remove those barriers. Lord, that you can bring us to a point, Father, where, where we can no longer have, make an excuse why we're not saved. Lord, we can no longer make an excuse why we're no longer obedient. Or, or Lord, that we won't serve. Father, you can tear down all those barriers. Just like you tore down the barrier of death through the resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Now, Father, draw your people by your Spirit. For that one that needs salvation today, give them the courage to step out that we might take the words of life and show them how they might have eternal life in Jesus Christ our Lord. And Father, for that one that, that Lord, for today, for whatever reason, is not obedient, Lord, won't you break down those barriers. Lord, let them recommit their lives to you. Father, to become obedient to you and your word. And finally, Father, for those that, that know they need to serve, 
But Lord, it seems like everything gets in the way. Father, I would pray, Lord, that you would give them the courage to pray for you to remove those barriers so that they might serve you with joy and gladness. Now, Father, lead and guide during this invitation time. Speak to the people, speak to the hearts of your people as only you're able to. Draw them by your spirit and we'll praise you. We'll worship you and honor you. We've asked all these things in Jesus' name for his sake. And all God's people said with me. You didn't have to wait for the music, folks. If God's speaking to your heart, you should come right now. This all is over. We're waiting on you.